All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Today on the show, we have Terry Dry, who is the founder of Future Proof Advisors. Terry, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well, man. Thanks for asking. And we like to jump right in. So if you could start with telling us a little bit about yourself and what you like to do for fun, that'd be great. Um, about myself, I like uh, warm weather, <laughs> which is why I live here in Los Angeles. I grew up in Chicago, so hence... I don't like cold weather. So I like sunshine and warmth. So that got me to LA. Uh, what do I like doing for fun? Uh, number one is being with my kids. I've got two daughters, 13 and 11, and they are the best. I shouldn't say I like being with my wife too. So uh, being with the whole family is we were just chatting before we started going to Hawaii, we discovered uh, bocce ball, which we never really did. And we were playing games, just any kind of games and stuff like that, that I can play with my family is like really fun. And then on my own, I, I like to play golf and uh, I'm a huge auto racing fan. So I watch a lot of racing and hockey too, but uh, pretty much being with family is the most fun. Gotcha. Awesome. Awesome. And tell us what, tell us a bit more about what you do at Future Proof Advisors. Yeah. I mean, I have a background, I guess uh, my background is that, uh, I grew up in Chicago. Like I said, I hated cold weather, but I also wanted to be in the music business. So that brought me out to LA where I was in the music business for years. Then I was in the marketing agency business for years. I started my own company, sold it to a big company, then ran a big digital agency. And then I kind of was over it and wanted to do something else and be entrepreneurial again. So I started another company and then, and that went well as well in the SaaS space. And then I founded along the way Future Proof Advisors, which was really set up to sort of help mid-market businesses and emerging companies on transcending barriers that inhibit growth so they can achieve bigger, better outcomes. And what we've done is we've created almost like an outsourced board, advisory board for these mid-market companies because so many of them don't have it, like me. So it's like looking back 15 years ago, what's the brain trust that I wish I had and my partner and I had when we were starting, it's this. And so now I've, you know, I've been successful in my career and now I have the opportunity to help others be successful. So I've tried to set up this, I almost call it like a justice league of America of brain trust that can help advise uh, mid-market companies who, from people who've kind of been there, done that. And I could just help them avoid making mistakes that I had made in my past and just help them get further faster, kind of like a shortcut to success. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What are some of the mm, most common barriers that mid-market businesses run into? Um, you know, it's it's funny. A lot of it's psychological, right? A lot of it's mindset and playing to win versus playing not to lose, right? And when you're on your entrepreneurial journey and when you're starting out, you kind of, the first thing is like, I just got to make payroll, right? I just got to make sure this thing stays alive and you get into this sort of feast or famine mode. And that, uh, that makes it where you're playing not to lose, you know, and instead of playing to win. So there's a little shift in, I want to grow. I want to be better. And that's where the concept of future proof came in. It's like, I'm going to help future proof you forward. Um, but that's one of the barriers. Then, then there's kind of the core barriers to me that like, everybody's got a problem with financial visibility, right? It seems like, Everybody doesn't really know, they think they know, but then in order to grow, they don't really have a proper forecast, they don't have proper financial controls. So it's everything from what's going on in your mind to what's going on in your wallet. Um, there's lots of things that inhibit growth. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love that. I love that little distinction you made about uh, playing to like not lose versus playing to win. Yeah. Very important mindset shift, not just in business, like in life too. Absolutely. Right. And we all fall into the playing not to lose and, and, you know, it can happen, but for sure. And, and it also plays in, in life where a lot of these companies that inhibit growth, they don't really have a vision or a plan. They think they do, but it's typically like, I just want to make more money rather than what's my mission. What's my vision. What's my plan. What can this really turn out to be? What is it I'm looking to contribute in the world? And we try to help people articulate that too and, and just be that sounding board to help them get really clear on what they're trying to achieve. And so many people get into that mode and then five years go by, 10 years go by, and they're still in that hamster wheel versus like going towards a specific outcome. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Love that. 
Well, tell us a bit more about your motivation in life. What gets you up and keeps you going every day? Yeah, it's a little bit of what I was telling you. It's like, I just want to create a better future, like for people and for business, right? And so that's really where I was coming from. I was in the, you know, the music business, which was always fun, like, you know, help, you know, I was at big record labels working with big rock stars. And like, that was kind of fun to watch people enjoy. And then in the marketing agency business, you're, you know, you're doing advertising it was a little different. I was like, I'd like to really try to make an impact and, and be helpful. So creating that better future. It's like, I love building things and I love helping people. So I've basically set up a company where I can help people build things, you know, and, yeah. uh, and that's how that's all played out. But how about you? What, what's sort of your motivation and what you're doing? Yeah, I would say my motivation, I really love getting people to like bet on themselves. If that makes uh -huh. sense. I think a lot of people kind of live in fear and they're like, well, I can't take this step because what if this, what if that, what if this, and I really like, kind of getting people to like make the decision, take the step where I like talk them through it. You know, they kind of have their, I, I've been working these sales jobs. They have their objections. Uh, <laughs> you're properly trained in sales. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You like overcome the objections or whatever, but yeah, right. just like limiting beliefs. Let's call them limiting beliefs. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I really love helping people bet on themselves, but then walking through it with them is also something I really love to do. And the way I envision it isn't like a, not necessarily me like doing the work with them, but like walking through building it with them. So I bet it's very similar to kind of yeah. what you're doing, but that's. Yeah, uh, it is. It's, it's, it is. It's sort of like, uh, there's this great line I heard, like everybody just wants somebody to walk them home. Right. <laughs> yep. You know? And so there's a lot of what you just described and what you're doing and what we're doing of just kind of I'm going to help you because especially in what we're doing, like being an entrepreneur and leading a company is so lonely and people don't tell you that, you know, and when you do it, it's like, it's a really lonely thing. So I'm trying to help, you know, end the suffering and the loneliness and the fear and the, everybody's got a little imposter syndrome and everybody's got all that going on and just go like, no, let's, let's get it going. You know, let's, let's help you get, make, you know, your goals. And in many ways, we're holding people accountable, accountable too. we're like an accountability partner at the same time, which everybody can benefit from. So yeah, it's fun. We're kind of similar that way. Although you figured it out a lot younger than me. Yeah, I was yeah. too greedy first. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem I'm running into is, you know, being so young, there's that lack of experience. And also that like, well, I need to create the like, uh, financial foundation for myself first before I start telling people how to invest and telling people this because I know it all on a head level but yeah I haven't had the years for it to play yeah. out for me yet so it's kind of well, a yeah it's I mean look you're doing you're right I mean there is something to it like I was joking with you earlier but I would say like I always tell people I'm like getting old sucks I'm like the only thing that's good about it is you get wiser you really do and that just comes with time and experience and having more experiences but i'm like i don't like that my back hurts all the time but uh, <laughs> but uh but like i i do you you life's about learning right and each day that you live you see a different thing and you learn something and you pick up something and you can just be better um so there is something that comes from that but to your credit you're kind of throwing yourself into these situations and meeting people so it seems to me like you're accelerating your learning curve which is smart Yes. Yes. That is one perk of the podcast. You talk to a lot of experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's also a perk of the internet. You know, I always say to people, like I grew up, there was no internet, you know? So it's like, there's no excuse for not knowing things now. Like, like knowledge is at your fingertips. So I would almost apply that to experience. Like you can inhale so much more content and wisdom from people, even just watching interviews or lectures or whatever. And as my daughter is always doing, she's always consuming things at two times speed on YouTube. So <laughs> she's moving that much faster, you know, and uh, it's, it's interesting to watch how much, you know, more knowledge, just how much smarter you can get. But also you can kind of in a weird way, get experience just leveraging others by Google and YouTube, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, no, I think it's awesome. The information age, um, you know, and then you have a lot of people who they'll do it and they'll get analysis paralysis, which is like, don't forget to take the action. Definitely the yep. most important part, but you can learn. It's at your fingertips. Learn one thing and then implement it. 
Learn yeah. it, implement. Learn it, implement. Yep. So, love You're right. that. Well, awesome, Terry. Let's jump into your dreams and goals now. Tell us a little bit about your vision for, you know, the rest of your life as well as future proof advisors. That's uh, it's interesting. No one really ever asked that, but my my whole like fantasy is just to be and feel free, right? It's all about freedom for me, and um, but the freedom comes so that I can uh, make choices where I can be helpful, you know, and just be contributing. And so I always equate freedom with I have the ability to say yes to things that might come my way and be helpful to people that are doing things that I'm excited about, which is typically helping the world in some way. Like I really am fascinated by technology and using emerging technology and just things to help make the world a better place or make life, living life, um, a better experience. And so I get really intrigued by things like that. And that's kind of my dream is just being able to kind of be and feel free. And as a father and, you know, the, have a family, like you still have all those responsibilities, right? So, but um, just having that freedom of my time to be able to do things I want to do that again, contribute to the world. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. I love what how is you, your, I'm, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I love how you one recognize that you really want freedom, but then you tied your freedom to your desire to serve, which I think is yeah. usually a link that people don't make. They're like, oh, I want to be free. I want to be free. I want to be free. But it's like, I want to be free so I can do the things that fulfill me most, which is serve. Yeah. And that, look, from everything I've read, that happens to you when you get to be middle age, right? You go through these sort of cycles in life and it's totally happened to me. Like I'm the first to sort of admit that, you know, of like, okay, I got to this place where it wasn't all about money. It wasn't all about those things. It was just like, what, how can I give back? And how can I be helpful? And I think I always had that in me, but you get to a certain, like I said, I've been very fortunate that I've been successful. So that also like allows me um, some of that freedom of time as well. But what I'm curious, what's your dream? Yeah, man. So I really have two dreams. It's okay. uh, financial Let's freedom it. for myself and my family, because, yeah. you know, that's just been a struggle for my family since as long as I could remember. And the second one, Really big one, but alleviating poverty around the world. Yeah, that's one of mine too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, at first I thought it was like actually impossible, but then I'm reading books and there are people who are already doing it and they're like, no, feasibly it could be done by like 2030. That was written in like 2014 or something like that. Yeah. Like extreme poverty around the world. And then relative poverty, you know, obviously takes a bit more work, but um, yeah, I just, I want to be free as quickly as possible so I can spend my time doing that in a kind of stress-free way where I'm like something I realized when I was like 18, 19, cause I tried to jump in full-time college, like doing my nonprofit idea. And I was just broke. Like I was dead broke <laughs> and <laughs> I had so much stress. And what I realized yeah. was I could end poverty around the world, but if my family wasn't taken care of, something would still be missing in me. Yeah. So it was really important for me to get kind of things straight with my family first. One of which is financial Another much bigger piece is what I'm realizing uh, recently is more like emotional kind of spiritual connection um, yeah. is something that has to get together. But yeah, those are my two, two things I'm going after. So everything, the podcast, real estate, um, anything crypto, anything investing, it's all the purpose of financial freedom to ending poverty. Yeah, I'm with you on that. You know, it's funny. I, I, I got very involved in trying to help on the homelessness issue and one of the things that actually really inspired me was being in your hometown of Austin. And I was one of the people that invade your city every March for South by Southwest. Yep. And we're doing all the fun, geeky, you know, tech things, right? And then you walk like one block <laughs> oh, uh, past 6th Street and there is just a ton of homelessness. Yeah. And I, the last time before I had quit my job, I was running a big digital agency and I was there and I took a walk at night and I saw that and I just went back to my hotel room and I was just like, this isn't right. Like, I can't be doing this anymore. Like I'm over here in this crowd, but there's all these other human beings like 50 oh, yards yeah. away from what we're doing that could really use help. And I think I could help them. And uh, that's part of what inspired me was actually when you were just saying that, I'm like, I have this very strong memories because South by the, the, the like dynamic is just so in your face when you're there and it's just so immediate um and so extreme yeah and uh so anyway just sharing that 
<laughs> My <laughs> no. little Austin tidbit. No, thanks. It didn't for stop me from getting good barbecue though. So maybe I'm not fully self-actualized. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, it's the same thing. We're driving around the city now. You'll see all the tents and all the homeless people Yeah. Like on a really cold day. You'll think about it. And I think what gets me the most is, um, you know, I didn't cause them to be homeless. Like, it's not my fault they're homeless. But what is my fault is not realizing my full potential so that I can help as many people right. as possible. And yeah. I what a great. One. That's very well said. And I compliment you for getting to this place in your life uh, early in your life it's awesome thank you no thank you i appreciate that um now i got gotta take the action right <laughs> it's nothing without yeah. action well yeah it's, yeah and be yeah. patient with it though yes. be patient be yep. patient yeah um well awesome if there were one or two people that you could meet right now and this person can be a specific person or a type of person and they would help you take the next step towards being and feeling more free or maximizing your helpfulness in the world, who would they be and how would they do it? Um, there's a couple people. I, I think I, I, I actually, when I think about it, it's, it's almost local, but um, they're very entrepreneurial people. One would be a guy named Bill Gross who runs a company called Idea Lab and they're based near me in Pasadena and they've created a fund and they just help companies. It's like an incubator of companies. And uh, I really love his approach to things. And I, I've met people who've worked there and I think they, you know, are trying to do good, you know, with, but still being entrepreneurial. And on that same wavelength is, is, is another person who's also based here in LA uh, named Peter Diamandis. And he's behind the X prize, if you're familiar with that and uh, uh, some real innovative things that use technology but it's always based on solving like big problems like poverty, like, you know, all these, the environment, lots of big issues that they are doing. And he's just a real inspirational kind of entrepreneurial person. But what these people have figured out that I have not figured out yet is how to sort of raise tons of money and be able to put it towards really good things and manage, you know, that kind of stuff. And that's kind of the path we're on for future proof is to we're, we're seeing a lot of good companies and a lot of good people and to sort of establish some kind of capital and fund to to be able to help so those are people that they inspire me they're also their energy and passion towards their work is is really inspiring as well yeah absolutely so that comes to my mind yeah bill gross and peter diamandis yeah there we go I could go with people like Gandhi, but he, he's, you know, I don't know how I could get a meeting with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That'd I don't be a think hard that would work. work. Yeah. Hard to confirm. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Well, name the most important one or two things that everyday people can do to really help you out. So we know how Bill Gross and Peter can help you out, but what can everyday people do? To me, it's just be kind. Hmm. Just be respectful and kind. I, I think, uh, if there was a lot more care and kindness in the world, um, there'd be a lot of better things. So that's kind of what comes to my mind when you say that. Um, that's There's a lot of divisiveness out there and there's a lot of selfishness. So maybe selflessness comes with being kind is the way I look at it. Awesome. And so I don't think anybody listening to this maybe is just a kind of mean bitter person <laughs> that's probably true <laughs> but if they would have tuned out by now hearing us yeah they'd be like i, I don't need these two do you have any advice for <laughs> us on how to deal with the mean and bitter people in our world and maybe um kind of cr- make a crack in their hearts so they can get more to who they are and be more kind to others well one thing i've learned is you can't change other people right? That, that's the, that, that, and you've got to, and you'll never ever also know what they're thinking, right? But I think if you model the behavior and you kind of put out the energy of who you are and what you are, you'll probably attract like-minded people and, and you'll also probably repel people who aren't, you know, and that's okay. Um, the, you know, diversity and whatever makes the world go round. So I don't know that I'm, 
I, I, I think I've given up on trying to change people. Um, I, I try to be helpful to people who want help. And I think that's the real thing, which is there's probably a lot of people who need that advice, like what you were just saying of like, but you have to have people who need it and want it because otherwise they won't accept it. Right. So that that's kind of, I don't know if that's answering your question, but that's, that's the way I look at it, which is, you know, just try to be a good person and, and, and always be respectful and, you hope that you have that kind of influence on others and that, and that was it, but I can't change people. Yeah. Yeah. It makes me think of this, um, Marianne Williamson. Sure. Um, poem, the one that goes like our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear. Anyway, at the end of that poem, it talks about, and as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. That's right. So, I think that was a great way of, um, I think that's exactly what you were trying to say. And I think it's a great way to help people. It's like, Timmy, I need you by my side all the time to articulate my points far better than I do. So well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. it. Um, awesome. Well, let's jump into our thriving three now. First question right. is what's your favorite book, movie, or podcast? Pick one. It's got to be my book, which is um, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success by Deepak Chopra. And I'm a huge fan. I would assume you might be too, Tim. Are you, do you follow any Deepak Chopra stuff? I have not even heard of that book before. Really? Okay. Yeah, um, yeah you know what? Because you're younger. He was kind of at his most popular, I think, in like the 90s and 2000s. Mm -hmm. But look into him. I think you'll find him really interesting for some of the stuff that you do. But it's sort of the meditation meets spirituality meets this but this book it's a short easy read and it had such a huge impact on my life and uh i've since learned meditation at his he has like a whole retreat and stuff and so i've kind of gone down that path but it's called the seven spiritual laws of success i think you can read it in like an hour hour and a half and it just is a very very helpful way to kind of look at life it's not just about business it's about life but uh, and just how to look at the world and look at yourself and some of the stuff that it sounds like i think you'll be happy i just said that i think you'll like it yeah it sounds, i'm yeah. really excited that you said that because i really liked the power of now yeah it it's in the same it's in that same vein right in that same world yeah um, but this one it's funny to me how many people don't know it because like when i picked it up it felt like how could you not know this? You know, like, like, yeah. and, and, it, and it felt like he was ever, I think Oprah was a big supporter of his and everything. So I guess for me at that time in my life, in my twenties, when I read it, it really had a profound impact on me. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds so that's my good. favorite. I yeah. hope it's on a uh, Scribd because I just bought my subscription. So if it's there, I'm going to read it. Very yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be there. Awesome. Well, what's one way you like to take care of yourself? I know you mentioned meditation. Are there other yeah, ways? Yeah, that would be my answer would be meditation. I do exercise. I keep, keep, you know, try to keep myself together, but meditation has been, is a really great way. So For the that listeners would be that aren't going to go read this book in the next week, tell us a little <laughs> bit about how you meditate and what it does for you. Um, you look, you can meditate. I mean, people can meditate in one minute right? So I think sometimes when you talk about meditation, people are like, oh, that's a whole like weird thing. And, and, uh, and I'm like, no, you can do it. And now with with apps like, like Headspace, and there's so many, it, it's become so normal now. Um, so what I would say, like, I've learned, uh, in this particular case, I've gotten like my own mantra and things that I, I, I do, but I'm not great at it, right? So you're supposed to do it, at least the way I was trained, you know, do it like 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at the end of the day. And I never do it that well. You know, if I do it for like 10 minutes in the morning, that's a good day. But just sit quietly. Um, there's different guided meditations you can do. There's things where you can ask yourselves questions, you know, just to calm your mind. But otherwise, it's just sitting quietly. Like if you just sit quietly and breathe, you're meditating, you know? So it's just keeping your like, calm and sort of centering and there are certain things you can kind of put in your mind that help you know just have a good day but that i, I hope i'm answering the question that that's, yeah, that's what meditation cool. is to me but yeah i've i've kind of went down that path of trying to learn at the same time like when i did it one time well, i took a meditation thing and my wife thought it was so funny she like was videoing me from afar because i was outside and making fun of me and i'm like that's great like i don't care like it was just 
funny, but it, it works for me, but keeps the blood pressure down and just keeps you centered. Yeah, absolutely. There we go. And something, something that was funny, I was kind of listening to a keynote speaker one time and Tim Ferriss has that book, uh, Tribe of Mentors, uh-huh. where you kind of just, you get advice from a bunch of successful people. He was like, the one thing I noticed was that they all meditate. Yeah. And that's what it seems like. Everybody who's kind of has any form of success, any form of like joy or contentment has that meditation aspect in their life. So, yeah, it's remarkable. I, I remember because I went away for a week to really train and learn. This is like six, seven years ago, something like that. And I came back to my business. I was like, oh, I'm like, no one can call me. I'm, you know, I'm on this thing. And I came back. And like all hell broke loose, like people were quitting. And I was so calm. I was just like, yeah, okay. Like, (laughs) you know, I was like, like a hippie, you know, and uh, it was just like, it was totally fine. And so um, there's a lot of just benefit to, I mean, there's clinical scientific benefits to it, but yeah, I think it, it would make sense. It just keeps you, like I said, centered. Yeah, absolutely. There we go. Well, what is one action step? that you can take right now to meet Bill Gross or Peter Diamandis? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I probably could, I, I, six degrees of separation. I mean, I, I know people who know them, so I could do it. I, I probably could like push to just get a meeting um, or a conversation, but uh, I'm still forming some of my sort of bigger master plan. And so once I have that, then that might be, the right next step to just hope to get a little bit of mentorship and learning because life's about learning. So I love that, but yeah, I guess I could, I'm I'm not, not there yet. I want to make sure if I do those meetings, I'm, I'm ready to make the most impact. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There we go. Well, one last question for you. So you know how there are people on the planet that have that really fixed mindset, not willing to accept help, not willing to accept change. Sometimes they live their whole life like that. And sometimes they'll die like that. Other times, they'll make that change in their life to more of a growth mindset, willing to accept help and willing to accept change. In your opinion, what is the catalyst that causes that change for people? Uh, You're reminding me of kind of one of my favorite statements, which is what I think, which is change is inevitable and struggle is optional. And so when you just, that's sort of the catalyst, right? If, If you're resisting change, and you're in this fixed mindset, you, you're missing it. Like, right. Everything's changed. We're changing as we're talking, right. So our DNA is, everything's changing. Yep. So if you don't struggle against it, actually embrace the change is where you can really move from a fixed mindset to a more open mindset. And to me, it's the catalyst is I'll call it acceptance is sort of just realizing you can't control everything this is the world we live in. And the more I sort of embrace that reality, um, it, it'll sort of free me to live that out. Um, that's one way. The only the other thing that's popping in my mind as you say that is I've heard these, there was some speaker I heard that was telling stories of um, being a paramedic and basically holding the hand or being with people you know, within 10 to 20 minutes before they die. And they were telling these stories of almost consistently, these people would have this sort of sense of calm that would come over them. Um, and there were, and, and he was giving this speech kind of encouraging all of us to like, think like that and recognize like, you're going to die one day. Yeah. And are you going to be satisfied and content with what you've done, what you've contributed, where you've at? And, and he felt that most people in these traumatic situations, right? Because if you're a paramedic, these aren't, you know, these, these are accidents, um, have this kind of moment. And so that was, if that's not going to kind of move you to like accept the changes there and get into like a different mindset, then I don't know what else could because you never know. Yeah. I feel like I just went on a weird tangent, but I hope that was answering your question. No, I think that's a, I think that's a great point to make. Um, kind of that being with people within 10 to 20 minutes before they die. Jeff Bezos talked a little bit about that. And there's also a book about it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And I'm doing a terrible job of remembering it and articulating who it was. I just remember that was like the major point was like, like, you know, don't take yourself so seriously. 
all this, stuff, you know, there's something really tragic could happen fast. And are you making the most impact? And, you know, these are all fair questions to ask. And, and would you be content with where you're at? And what would you do? You know, sometimes I've asked people, like, if you had a heart attack right now, like, and you made it, right? You survived, you get out of the hospital, like, what would you change in your life? And then I'll ask people like, okay, well, why haven't you make those changes now? Like good news is you didn't have the heart attack. Let's not let that be the catalyst, right? Um, let's try and move on. You seem like somebody who's already figured this out and I would have given anything to figure that out when I was your age. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. It is. Uh... I didn't have it figured out at all. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure it out, right? That's what life's about, but yeah, I'm, I'm closer. Have... I'm closer. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, awesome. Terry, is there anything else you want to talk about before we sign off? No, I would ask you that. I, I, hopefully this is helpful for people that are listening and they're, they're something out of this that helps inspire people to just be better or enjoy their lives or do something to help. But no, I'm all good. Awesome. Sounds good. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank, yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Of course, man. Thanks for coming on the show. We appreciate My it. My pleasure. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Well, if you guys are listening to this and you loved what Terry had to say, what would be the best way for them to reach out to you? Um, probably the easiest way is to go on LinkedIn and just find me Terry Dry there, or you can go to our website at futureproofadvisors.com and just contact us that way. Awesome. And all of that will be in the show notes. As we always ask guys, send this podcast to one to three people you know need to hear this message. Shoot us a five-star review on iTunes and we're out.